church boxes. It's just, just the stuff that I'm just going to give away to Salvation Army or something, but if you want them, uh, you can have them. My wife sat there and said, well, thank you very much. And the moment the, the lady shut the door, my wife jumped on those boxes like a wildcat. <laughs> when she opened them up, and both boxes were full of country crafts. Now, I know that you would be too spiritual to be concerned with such things. I haven't done a lot of things in my life like fishing and hunting. I just mainly talk about it. Um, and a lot of times I've been given opportunities from the Lord and I've refused to take them wrongly. But I've been amazed. You know, there are, there are doctors... You know, and I have I have great respect for doctors. There there are doctors. They make a lot of money. That they go, man. I'm going to save up and go on a hunt in Iowa. Because I mean, that's where the big bucks are. I went to Iowa a few months ago, or a month ago, or whatever, and hunted for nothing. God opened up the door, and someone just let me go. I want you know. Do you see what I'm saying? It, 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 God is so well-rounded. He loves His children. He gives them the desires of their heart. And exactly when they need it. And He withholds such things when they don't need it. Just Here's the thing about slavery. Slavery is a, is a wonderful thing if you're a slave to a perfect master. Because do you realize that the master is in charge of what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, protecting you, defending you, everything. You're only in charge of one thing, doing what the master says. That really simplifies life, doesn't it? Now, most people are given to doing all the things to provide for themselves and then not doing the will of their master. Instead of setting themselves to doing the will of the master and the master taking care of their every need. So God will give us the desires of our heart. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. And one thing that's very important here, notice this person isn't delighting himself in hunting or fishing or clothes or a car or anything else. He's delighting himself in the Lord. What is the desire of his heart? The Lord. So one of the greatest benefits of that is the Lord's going to give him the Lord. A very wealthy man came to me one time and he was talking about the Lord had really worked in his life and he was going to do some serious adjustments. And I praise God for that. I mean, he, he, he really did. And he said, you know, Brother Paul, he goes, this was years ago, you know, I look at you and I, I just feel, you know, it just doesn't seem right and just doesn't seem fair. And He's going on and on, you know, about how he has so much and I had so little. And that's not the case now at all. God has taken well care of me. This is a long time ago and he said, you know, I just feel so bad. It's just not fair. And I looked at him, I said, yeah, it's just not fair. He kind of looked at me. He didn't expect me to agree with him. I said, yeah, it's just not fair, brother. I, I, I really feel sorry for you. I, I'm, I almost feel like I need to apologize, but I mean, I can't fight against the sovereignty of God. It's what he did. And he goes, what are you talking about? I said, brother, I just really, I mean, I'm sorry that your plot in life has turned out this way. And he said, no, I mean the reverse. And I said, no, you've got it backwards. I said, all you have is money. I said, every time I bow my knee, I sense the presence of God. Almost every time I open this book, He teaches me something. I've seen Him save people. I've seen Him heal people. I've seen Him do miracles that cannot be explained. I'm so sorry that your lot in life has just fallen to money. You see? He gives us the desire of our heart. Boy, don't look over what He's done. Do you realize? At least me. Look at me. I have a wife 
and I have three children. The house is solid. If it wasn't for Christ, I'd either be an alcoholic or dead. Probably married three times. Children that hated their dad because he was a self-centered jerk. I mean, <laughs> you can't outbless God. You have no idea what you would be if it wasn't for Him. He's, he gives us the desires of our heart. And see, the, the meek man knows that. He's not morbidly following Christ like the disciples. When Jesus said He was going to Jerusalem, they're like, well, let's just go to Jerusalem and die with Him for no purpose whatsoever. That's not the way a meek man follows God. He follows Him happily, full of hope at what God is going to do through Him and in His life. He says, He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. What's a meek man? This is it right here. He commits his way to the Lord. A meek man does not try to figure out his own way. He doesn't cut through the land to build his own canal. He doesn't work to climb a ladder or, or manipulate or do anything. He commits his way to the Lord. Lord, you do with me what you want. I'm going to follow you. I commit my way to you. And, but the meek man knows, trust also in him and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light. Again, this is not a morbid, I'm going to lose for the sake of following God. He knows God's going to vindicate him. God will bring forth his righteousness. God will be his helper. So a meek man is ultimately one who trusts God commits his way to God. Proverbs 3, five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. The meek man is the man who does that. Now, it goes on. Look at 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. What is it? Isaiah 30.15 in quietness and in trust shall be your strength. Hudson, uh, um, I think it was Hudson Taylor, is such a great example of this. The war was brewing all around him, and he's there in the missionary compound in his office. The army is, is basically at the gate of the compound. They've killed people, murdered people, everything. There's nothing to stop them from coming into the compound, killing everybody. And one of the workers runs into Hudson Taylor's office and is just, you know, they're coming, they're coming. And Hudson Taylor's sitting there at his desk singing hymns. And the guy goes, what are you doing? They're right outside. They're going to kill us all. And Hudson Taylor looked up and said, what do you want me to do? What can I do? What should I do? I can't stop them. I can't escape. If I'm going to die, I would rather die singing hymns to the Lord. And if the Lord wants to spare me, He can, but no one else can. So, so look what He's doing here. He's resting in the Lord. He's waiting patiently for Him. He does not fret because of Him who prospers in the way. Listen, do not fret because of evil men. Evil men outside of the church, evil men inside of the church. Don't fret because of them. You wait patiently upon the Lord. Now, just really quick, look at verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing. Do you see what he's going... Look, to fret and become angry at the situation around you is not to be meek. Trust in the Lord. Lean on Him. He will vindicate you. He will bring forth your righteousness. And then, it says in 10, Yet a little while and the wicked man will be no more. You will look carefully for his place and he will not be there. But the humble will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. 
That's what it means to be meek. Doesn't that teach you a lot more than just, well, meekness doesn't mean weakness? Look at that text. Because that is one of the greatest, greatest needs in our life today is to be meek. Let's pray. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for Your kindness to us. Thank You for the power of Your Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen.